So, um, so before we start, <clears throat> just this one statement that um, you know, physical physical growth or biological growth is um, is natural. You know, in the sense, it's it's automatic, right? Louder, okay. Um, so, physical growth or biological growth <clears throat> is usually automatic, right? It's normal. It's if it's a normal human body, and given the right nutrition and everything, you know, it's it's automatic. Whereas we know that spiritual growth is not automatic, but it's intentional, right? Spiritual growth is not. It does not depend on how many years we have been a believer. Or how many years we have been, a, you know, we have been in ministry, or you know, it does not depend on that, as opposed to uh, physical or biological growth, right? And um, so that's something that we need to understand, and that's why scripture, over and over again, we see this exhortation or in, you know, the instruction in scripture. Um, I just want to read a few verses: First Timothy four and verse sixteen, right? First Timothy four was. Um, yeah, maybe 14 onwards, he says, Do not neglect the gift which is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Okay, So meditate, give yourself entirely, which means yield completely to the teachings, to the learnings, whatever you have heard, so that your progress. So there is a progress that comes from yielding, that comes from meditating on the Word of God, which means if I do not yield to the Word of God, if I'm not intentionally taking time to meditate on the Word of God, making sure that the Word of God is resident in me, right, in my thoughts, in my spirit, then there is no cause for growth, right? And we see this over and over again. Just want uh, one more scripture that we can see is... Um, is in First Peter, I think First Peter chapter two, right? First Peter chapter two, verse one, verses one and two. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Okay. And again, Second Peter, the last verse, it says, uh, but grow. Uh, uh, in the no grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so all of us, when you know, in our identity in Christ, we have the potential, like potential to grow and potential to be all that God wants us to be. But it is not automatic; it is intentional, right? Whether it's pursuing the call of God, whether it's maturing into Christ likeness, uh, growing in the wisdom and the grace and the knowledge of God. You know, it is it is intentional. Okay, so um, so that is something that we need to understand that it is our responsibility to uh, to pursue. And if we want to grow, we pursue, we yield, we expose ourselves to God, His presence, and His Word, right, over and over again. Okay, so let's pray. Okay, Father, we we thank you, Lord, for this exhortation, Lord, to grow in the grace and knowledge. Lord, to desire the pure milk of the word, therefore to grow, to meditate on these things and to give ourselves entirely, Lord, so that there will be progress and that progress will be evident to all. Master, we we desire the same things, God. Lord, for we just want to intentionally, Lord, pursue you, your word. Lord, meditate and give ourselves entirely to it, Lord, so that there will be progress in our lives. That there will be spiritual growth, and everything is for your glory, and for your glory alone, God. So we we submit ourselves, Lord, into your mighty hands. And I just pray that whatever alignment, whatever changes that we need to make, Lord, um, uh, for that, you will enable it, us to do that, Master. We thank you that you are with us, and you're all always, Lord, encouraging us, God, exhorting us, O oh God, to to follow your plans and purposes, Lord, which are good. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, last class we looked at teamwork. And um, we, we looked at um, 
the dynamics of the team, right? What does it mean to be a team and how, as a team, our strength, our resources, our uh, knowledge, everything is exponentially increased, right? So uh, we also saw why some people may not want to get into teams. We saw some of, some of those reasons because there are the advantages of many. The, it is scriptural, but because of various reasons, people do not want to work in teams. You know? They'd rather do things alone. Um, but uh, we saw the advantages of working in teams. Okay, So now, today, let's look at um, a checklist. Let's just go through a checklist. It just uh, says Team 101, which means that you know if, if it's a when there is a team, these are some things that we can ensure that it is in place in the team. Okay, So whether we are part of a team or whether we are leading a team, we can make sure that these things are in place. You know, there will always be some some unknowns, some you know some undefined challenges when we are working in teams. But if we know these basics, you know, we can make sure that these are there. You know, whether we are working in whether we're working with the team or whether leading a team, right? So let's just go through uh, a few of those. Okay. So the first thing is that to ask again, it's it's a it's a question about the vision. To ask yourself, you know, does everyone in my team know the purpose why we are gathering or why we are together as a team? Okay, which means the vision of the team. It could be a ministry team, it could be a work team, but the question is this: Does everyone know and fully understand the vision? Fully understand the purpose. Okay, so if you are a leader, it's it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility to spell that out. Hey guys, this is why we are gathering. This is why we are together as a team, or we have been formed as a team. Okay, The purpose is clear. Right? So if the purpose is clear, then the second thing is, does everyone uh, does everyone own, own it? Okay, Or is it just somebody saying, you know, a, a leader who's saying, oh, this is the vision, and the other people, others who are there, they don't have ownership of it. What is ownership of it? Which means that it is personal to them as well. Okay, so like we can say, uh, you know, uh, and there will always be, you know, people with varying degrees of personal ownership, right? And we can see that. Which means that are they committed to that cause? To what extent are they committed to working together? You know, to the cause. Uh, there will always be varying levels of commitment. But the fact is, does everyone understand and does everyone come to that? Has everyone come to that place of owning the team? Now, for example, um, you know, a person who newly joins the team may not understand you know, why this team is functioning or why this organization is there. You know, they may not really understand. So it, that is why, you know, if you if you join a particular company or a work, um, you know, any any place, even in ministry. There is an orientation. Like the orientation is to describe, okay, this is the job function. This is what you need to do. Uh, this is how things are. And this is the overall big picture or the vision of the team. Okay. So it needs to be reiterated over and over and over again. Okay. And the ownership of it. You know, you you if the if the ownership of it is not there, what could happen is that uh, some people are highly committed working towards it. But others are not. Right? They are just there. And uh, and the other thing, the negative side is, if they do not own it, they could have their own understanding of why we are there. Right? And um, right. For example, uh, just about the worship team itself. Right? Um, the worship team came through different seasons and and so on. And the vision. Now, at one point, I'm talking about you know many years ago, maybe 10 years, 15 years. At one point, uh, 12 years. At one point, the the vision was not very clear, right? So even though people were there in the team for many years, they still felt that the vision was something else. Okay. For example, right now, what we have clarified and we have put together is that the vision of the worship team is to delight God's heart in uninhibited worship okay so that's the first thing right to to worship god you might be a worship team member you might be there to lead in worship 
but the first responsibility is to for you yourself personally to to delight god's heart in an in, in inhibited worship second one is to to seek the manifest presence of god okay so to pursue the manifest presence of god but what happened was when we when this was not clear the team felt that their responsibility was to lead others lead the church lead you lead the gathering into worship okay so that was the thing whether i worship or not is secondary but i need to lead you into worship okay i need to teach you i need to encourage you to worship but what about me personally well that that may or may not happen no it was that kind of a scenario right so then we had to clarify and bring clarity because if when we did not have that clarity there were a lot of confusion right because um, priority with god personal worship personally pursuing god hungering and thirsting after his presence was not the priority for every member in the team so the vision is very very important okay why are we here what is it that we need to do right and uh, we need to reiterate this over and over reiterate meaning make sure the people remember this okay okay that's the first one okay the second thing so this is kind of a checklist you know is it there you know do we have all this in place second thing is to the right to make sure that the right person is doing the right job or right person in the right place at the right time okay so now we in a team we have people with different capabilities different skills abilities etc now are they in the right role okay now somebody who is a very let's say in a church somebody is a very people's person you know they like meeting people they like talking to people and they enjoy that and that's something they they you know they're drawn to do now where would you place them you know if they say i want to serve sorry you could yeah you can put them in greeting you can put them in ushering uh, you can put them in first this time visitors welcome right uh, you can put them in uh, sorry you can put them in member care right so this is what they are naturally drawn to now suppose you put them in media or powerpoint okay now maybe they have the skill like maybe they have the ability but you know as a as a leader one needs to see okay is this person rightly suited for this because that person is going to okay he sit in front of the machine but more inclined to you know connect with people is going to be interfering in other people hey, hi how are you and saying let's talk and because that's what they are drawn to you know and and they might feel frustrated at the end of the day that i'm not contributing anything so uh, you know the wrong person in the wrong place there will be regression regression meaning the whole thing is pulled back rather than going forward they're going back okay the wrong person in the right place there is frustration you know this is the right role but is the wrong person so the person is frustrated in fact everyone else is also frustrated okay the right person in the wrong place then there is confusion you know there's a uh, you know uh, then the right person in the right place there is progress there is movement there is advancement and if you have a team where you have the right people in the right places then there is multiplication which means that you know we are able to grow right you're able to replicate uh, what we're doing okay so the placement is very important it's not that okay you come you do this but you know uh, initially it might start that way but then we must be uh, you know have the discernment to understand okay is this person suited for this okay can i change right okay then the third one is attitude okay so for people to have a good attitude about the task about the project about the work and ministry okay now now i know you know sometimes it does not uh, uh, immediately you cannot actually observe it and notice it right maybe first interaction you may not know second the saying you may not know maybe an interview you may, you may not you know may or may not uh, you know find out about this but this, this will eventually show up um, as people work as people are given responsibilities and so on the attitude towards work 
attitude towards other fellow workers okay so we need to have a good attitude so this is what um, you know john c maxwell says he says a good attitude among the members do not guarantee a team's success okay so that's just one part of it no if one has a good attitude that doesn't guarantee that the team will be succeeding because team success depends on so many other things like skills and so on but if it's a bad attitude you can be sure that it will fail right if there's a bad attitude you can be sure no matter how skilled they are it's only a matter of time when they will fail okay so this this is put together get the together this matrix it says that you know gra- great talent plus rotten attitudes is a bad team so you might be highly skilled highly skilled highly talented but if one is going to have a bad attitude then it's going to result in a bad team okay what, what, so what could be a bad attitude in a team what do you think or what could be uh, you know so we can we can say okay this is a bad attitude i need to avoid that what could be a bad attitude in a team you can, you can use the mic uh, online students also you can put it on the chat what could possibly be a bad attitude in a team just think of a team what could be a bad attitude if one is selfish okay for example let's say a football team okay now it's a team sport we know and if one gets the ball and if they they're saying okay i need to score okay only i will i need to score and uh, if they're just running towards the goal they are you know dribbling past the other players and they're going there and there is another another team who is in a you know advantageous place in order to score but this person does not pass right in the end he may or may not score but the fact is that they could have scored high you know high um, chances of scoring because the other person was in a position better to score but this person did not pass right so which means that you know i want myself to be promoted i want my name to come, come out i want it's all about me okay so yes anything else sorry pride okay so how will that come out sorry okay so i i can do all things i mean in a good way and if it's a humility you know it's it's nice i can do all things through christ who strengthens me uh, but then if it's going to be arrogant in the sense you know i can do things but you cannot you know it's like you're looking at the other person comparing and you're putting them down um then it is definitely uh, going to be uh, because this <clears throat> this person is going to not, not going to respect the others in the team right and it's just over a period of time they're going to put down others maybe they're going to you know talk bad about them all that right yeah negligence huh? um in the sense negligence would be um hmm. not being uh uh-huh. neglecting one's responsibility maybe um yeah 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 so these are yeah so it's it's more to do with the heart in the sense uh, you know it's okay you know it's okay if this does not happen that's all i you know i uh, i've done the bare minimum it's okay i'm not going to look into it you know things like that um some examples given yeah here the team cannot function without me okay you're a skilled person you're the expert on certain things but if you're going to have an attitude like without me you know this team is this cannot be there right if you're going to have that attitude it's going to carry on into your interactions with people uh, and every, you know it's going to result in pride right uh, i'm the only one who's actually contributing to the team again you know or i'm the top performer so i'm above the office rules right so which means that uh, my performance is you know above everyone else's whatever i'm doing whatever i'm contributing it's more than what the others are doing therefore i don't have to obey the guidelines or i don't have to obey the rules right or i can be flexible with it you know i can come when i want i can go when i want to um you know if if everyone needs to do certain things and i'm not going to be doing it 
Now that's a bad attitude. Just imagine if one person is like that in the team. What happens is that it becomes very contagious. Okay, what does contagious mean? It spreads, right? So it spreads to all. It spreads to everyone. And uh, and the thing is that if there are new folks who join, or new people who join the team, it spreads to them as well. So uh, a bad attitude is very contagious. It spreads, right? Okay. Then to understand that there is a price for success. What is that price? That there needs to be effort. There needs to be diligent effort. There are there's commitment. There is sacrifice. So, so one 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 has to understand. The people in the team have to understand that it it requires hard work. It requires commitment, and yes, it requires sacrifice. Okay. So not everything is going to be easy. Not everything, every task, or there, there could be seasons where I need to, for the sake of the task, for the sake of maybe the ministry and everything, I need to sacrificially give up certain things in order to, in order to carry it out, in order to accomplish. You know, maybe there is something like um, I don't know. You no, know, if you if you just look at the some of the demands like on some of a church teams, right? Some sometimes it's it's quite demanding, right? Everything is volunteer work, but if you look at the the setup team, right? Um, sometimes what happens is because it's a rented facility. I'm I'm talking about you know central location. Suppose you know because it's a rented facility, and uh, we need to set up the equipment. There could be a program on Saturday, right? There could be something happening on Saturday. And that program might get over by, let's say, 10 o'clock or 10.30 p.m. late in the night. Okay. Normally, the setup would happen by afternoon and they finish by evening. But this would actually start only after 10, right? After everything is, that program is done and that, you know, the they, they've cleared the stage and then only then will this setup be possible. So, which means that sometimes... There is that sacrifice. You know, I can't say that, you know, this is, I'm part of the team, but then, you know, I don't like to come in late and do that. You know, that's, it's, it's, it's needed, right? So, so, or even coming early in the morning, right? So it's, it goes with the task. It goes with the responsibility. So which means you understand that. And it's good to have an orientation even before the person joins you know it doesn't come as a surprise you know this is what is required right and so understand so everyone understands that there is effort there is sacrifice so then the team functions well okay okay then the the fifth one is the team needs to know maybe if it's a pro project if it is a time bound project you know let's say you are organizing uh, let's say organizing outreach organizing um, you know, a particular youth program or organizing, you know, something that you're organizing. You know the date is, let's say, end of May. Okay. And you know that you have about two months to prepare for it. Right. So everyone needs to know how much we have progressed. Everybody in the team. That's the score. You know, like typically if you if you if there's a match, when you when you look at the score board, you know that at any point in the match, you know, the, or any point in the game, you know that what the score is. Okay, if it's cricket, you know. Okay, this is hundred runs, two wickets down, maybe you know fifteen overs gone. So you look at the scoreboard, you know. Okay, so similarly, is there a scoreboard where the team understands with regard to the task? This is where we stand, each one of us. You know, I used to work for a sales organization, right? And uh, the last uh, company that I worked in, uh, the, we would have a meeting every uh, every day, every morning. We would have a meeting, and in that mor morning meeting, this was something that was reiterated, right? So individually, each person would know what is the what is the task or what is the goal, right? What is the target, and in relation to the target, let's say I need to sell hundred. Where am I right now? Okay, today's date is 27th or 26th. On the 26th, uh, where am I? What is my score? Okay, how much have I achieved? 
and what is the distance you know the, what is the balance okay maybe i've achieved 80 but a balance 20 has to come in the next four days or five days right uh, i need to have that knowledge understanding so every person in the team has to have that understanding so if you're a leader then you know have a timely meeting and timely sharing of where we need to go and where we are right now and what each person's responsibility is with regard to that okay okay then the next one is the connect okay so connect meaning is there communication within the team members okay it need not be that everybody is like talking all the time speaking all the time it, it's not that so we're just saying that there is there needs to be clear there needs to be uh courteous communication right within the team members okay so this is what it says so what why 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 is it important communication increases connection which leads to understanding one another and it increases effectiveness okay so communication increases connection which means that okay when you talk to people you understand and this you know you connect with people you're not uh, alienated from people right and when you connect with people, you understand them a little better. Right? You understand their, you know, their maybe their skills, abilities. You also understand their weaknesses and some of the challenges that they are struggling with. Okay, some of the things that they are struggling with. So, even when maybe you know some some responsibilities are given and you know they don't carry it out, yes, there are consequences. But you also, you know, you can empathize with some of the struggles that they are having, right? The challenges that they're having so that you can help them to overcome it, right? So, so that can happen only when we communicate. Then there's no communication. Communication is two-way, right? So there's also speaking. There's also listening. So when there is communication, then there are chances for i mean uh, definitely there are there's connection and when only when there is connection there is is there a understanding so when one understands that understands the other person then there is effectiveness right you're able to say okay you know today i will do this you're able to come to a place of uh, you know understanding each other and balancing out strengths and weaknesses therefore you the team becomes even more effective Okay, so one needs to ensure that there is communication. So, what is what can come against communication? Misunderstandings, miscommunication, misunderstandings, gossip, backbiting, you know, uh, unresolved conflicts, right? Unresolved conflicts. So, a person is saying, you know, and I, you know, I was very, very shocked. This way, this happened many years ago uh, in the school when you know my, my daughter was studying and. I think this was in some fifth standard or sixth standard. Okay, so you can imagine. So she came back and said, you know, these two girls are not, and we know them. We know them personally because they've come home uh, for the, you know, for our daughter's birthday party and all that. They've come home. So she suddenly said, you know, they are not talking to each other. Why? Because she said something about her. He said, I mean, she said something about the other person. And then, so they're not talking to each other. So I thought, okay, it'll just a passing phase, you know. They'll talk today; they will they won't talk, and tomorrow they'll you know make up, and again they'll be friends. No, but this continued on. That they would not talk for years, and ten after ten standard, I think one one of the girls left, or both of them left the school, and uh, I was very surprised that they did not talk to each other for four years, right? So, which means that even in activities and everything. If this girl isn't that, the other girl will not be there, right? So just imagine if that kind of a situation in a team, right, where a person says, "Okay, I'm not going to, you talk. I, I'm not going to talk, or I'm not going to do this because he or she is like that, or whatever reason." You know? If there is no communication, if there is no, which the, which means if there's no communication, if you look at that same statement, no, if there's no communication, that decreases connection, which means it leads to lack of understanding which pulls down the effectiveness right so it it needs to be there and uh, 
uh, team needs to have clear lines of communication and not just not just when we say communication it is not just personally talking and connecting during our you know free time and saying hey how are you doing uh, you know how are things at home um, you know how's your health it's not just that but it is also with regard to the work you know clear lines you know, this is how we communicate with regard to the work okay so when can we do this when can we discuss this you know is there a time for it is there a day for it right so which means meetings and so on right so we need to kind of establish that okay on such and such a time date let's discuss this so we need to establish so it needs to have a clear uh, structure so that will help okay and communication needs to be clear okay clear meaning there is no scope for understanding it differently right so suppose there is an instruction given okay um, like quite recently we did an exercise in the office where we were all split into teams and uh, each one of us had um, you know a sample email okay so a sample email which which we needed to correct it so the email would say something like hey uh, uh sorry today's meeting is not happening um and then it it might happen on another date it may not happen you know just the email is like that you know it may happen on a, another day it may not happen but uh, i'll i'll keep you posted i'll let you know um and, and so on you know so if it is so in that email Oh, and all the other sample emails, we saw that there is a, a lack of clarity. Okay? There is no sure and a definiteness about when something is going to happen. Okay, so if it is not clear, let's say you have an activity in the afternoon, and then nobody knows, right? There is no clarity about what time, where, where are we going to meet, what is happening. Then that results in uh, confusion, and also whatever communication comes, whatever is you know, said, spoken, texted out. If it is not clear, right? You can, you can, you can, you go through it and you say, okay, maybe it is like this, maybe it is like the other thing. Right? Maybe we are going, maybe we are not. You know, then there is absolute lack of clarity. Okay? Communication also needs to be concise. What is the meaning of concise? It means it needs to be brief, right? Uh, let's say, for example, if you're texting an instruction, emailing an instruction, writing down an instruction, it needs to be brief, right? It needs to be to the point, and it needs to be clear. Okay. Uh, only then will people be able to receive that content. Okay. So how many times happen? You know, you probably you open a text or you receive some forward, and it's one long one. Okay. Now you read two, three sentences, and after that you just close the message, right? Because you you don't have the patience to go through. Or there are too many details, too many details, right? For your mind to really keep track of. And so you know you. So when it comes to communication within the team, especially important things, especially about you know instructions to what needs to be done, what time, where, it needs to be concise. Okay. Courteous. Courteous means with respect, right? Respecting the other person, right? And then consistent. Okay, so this needs to be consistent, uh, meaning this is how it needs to be done over and over again. Okay. Okay. And, and if you're a team leader, we need to ensure that you facilitate that communication among the team members. Make sure that there are opportunities for people to communicate both unofficially, informal manner. And also when it comes to formal things, right? When it's a meeting, when it, something needs to be discussed, you facilitate and put in a structure where that can be done. Okay. Okay. Any questions here? So this is something that we can actually go back and check. You know, suppose you find yourself leading a team, you can go back and check and see, okay, do I have these things in place? There could be many more things, but this is a foundational, right? Um, this will ensure a fair amount of success uh, for the team to function and work towards. Right? Okay. Any questions based on how you have been part of a team or?
any challenges even with all this maybe you faced anything no okay okay let's let's move on to the next one you know how do we build a team okay so this is, we're talking about team building okay how do we build a team um you know this person who's the founder of taylor guitars a great product right taylor guitar good guitar so he says building the team is as important as producing the product which means that what the team is going to be involved in and the final end result is very important okay so building the team is as important as producing the product so two things okay, to build a team to build a great team you know first thing is to recruit the right people okay, what does recruit mean to select take people into the team you know i'm sure that um, you know when when we were small and we we had to pick a team right so you were in two two captains were there and they had to pick a team that you know you choose one person the other person chooses the other person and then you know then uh, they are they are picking you know why how are they choosing based on that person's ability okay or maybe they like that person you know i want that person in my team whatever you know he's my friend and i want and that guy is not going to you know feel bad if he's not part of your team you know whatever reason you know, many reasons for which you select people okay so but we need to select the right people okay knowing that this is the task we need to select the right people and sometimes we have the privilege or the opportunity to recruit the team team members right let's say you are starting from scratch you are starting from the beginning and then you have the you have the privilege you have the opportunity to put together a team okay so so how will you recruit you know if it's a it depends right if it's a if it's a company if it's an organization probably you will send out send out uh, you know an advertisement or information probably post it on you know various job job search uh, you know uh, or you know portals websites you put it you will advertise and you will say okay this is a maybe on your website this is an opportunity okay recruitment also happens informally right you tell someone and you say hey there is this need if you know of anyone just let me know okay and uh, that is also uh, that's another thing that we need to see but we need to you know recruitment we need to have a process in place okay whatever uh, teams we need to have a process in it's good to you know not do it in an ad hoc manner but say okay put things in place so you so you know that okay when when i'm recruiting people in the team this is the process that i'm going to follow okay. for example let's say uh, i'm again talking about the worship team uh, in our church so when we recruit people for the worship team okay now these are all volunteers right so we have a process in place okay the first thing is we ask people to fill out a form okay and that form has certain criteria already mentioned okay so it says okay you need to be part of church you can't be a visitor and still you know want to serve in a team you need to be part of church it means this is your church that you this is your home church and this is where you come on sunday you're part of the church community so we just need to make sure that okay at least 3 months if not 6 months that you are already part of a church okay so that form mentions that the form also asks about you know have you received the lord as your savior you know do you have a personal relationship with the lord jesus okay so because if you if you're going to be leading worship no matter how skilled you are if you are not a believer then you are not going to worship right and if you are not going to personally worship how are you going to lead others in worship right so that is another important thing so you know we put that and then there are other informations like you know if we put you in a different location will you still be able to serve are you serving first of all you know we need to find out okay are they serving in church you know ushering anything uh if not we need to find out okay why are you not serving is there a reason why you are not serving people give their reasons whatever right 
So this is a form. So that's the first thing. You know, we go through that form, and then we we know that okay, um, maybe we need to give this person some more time. You know, because it's just very new. We need to give them some more time. So there's a form. So after the form, then there is a, you know, we we see that okay, um, there are some people who qualify based on the form. Then there is an audition, right? So we invite people to audition, meaning you you come prepared with whatever area in whatever area you uh, said you are you know you are good at maybe you are a musician maybe you are a singer whatever you know you you come prepared with these songs right if you are a musician you come prepared with this if you are a singer you come prepared like if you are a if you are a lady and a singer you come prepared with these songs and then there is an audition right so what we do is even before the audition okay there is a orientation that we talk about see you you you've seen the team on sunday right and uh, and then you feel that okay you can contribute you want to serve in the same way but behind the scenes this is what is required you know this is the commitment that is needed because the team would meet on a weekday for practice and that practice would be maybe 2 hours maybe 3 hours um and even before that you need to personally invest time in personally practicing so can you do that the practice will not be in church it will be in some other place right so given your work given your responsibilities can you take time off in order to come on a weekday come for practice attend and go back okay so these are things that we talk about this is what worship team worship ministry is um and then we just give them the reality of this is these are the expectations these are the standards right so are you okay if you're okay come for the audition if not that's fine no problem you know you don't have to serve in this team right you can serve elsewhere but this is what it is and when you come for audition and when you when you go through the audition these are the outcomes one you get selected two you will not get it selected three you will say that you spend more time and come back for the next audition three outcomes okay just tell them very clearly so that they are not disappointed right sometimes people say you know i've served in so many churches so many places i've led in worship and you guys are not selecting me okay you just tell them up front this is what it is right these are the outcomes be prepared for it okay then then comes the audition so people after the audition there is a orientation which means that people come for practice but they don't yeah they're not rostered on a sunday morning so that happens for about 6 weeks 6 sundays or 6 weeks so 6 practices one and a half months yeah one and a half months 6 weeks i say because sometimes they travel they miss out on a week so which means they need to come that one and a half months can be yeah if you are go, going con- consecutively if they are attending a practice but, but otherwise it can be even you can stretch it this if you are doing only one one in the month it will be like 6 months right so um so that's the thing so they attend the practice why to get to know the team to get to know the songs if you attend 6 you at least know 30 songs right in when we are worshiping part of church we may not necessarily learn the song you know so, so the new song you don't you know so you don't think about it you don't even you know make an attempt sometimes you're just worshiping but if you're leading you're going to know the song so they learn you know how it is sung uh, if it's a musician what are the chords what keys everything right so at least 30 songs they know by the end of that time so and they know the team and they know this is what it is you know i need to wake up at this time i need to come for practice i need to prepare etc okay. so this is the recruitment process okay similarly like for different things you know it may not be you know this long drawn for certain other things but you need to have a process it could be a two step thing you know like you sign in you meet receive instructions and you start it could be as simple as that but you need to have a process okay so that's about recruitment okay so build a team we need to have a you know we can either recruit or sometimes we are given a team right the team is already there and maybe you are you come in as a leader to lead the team right or maybe you are already part of a team the team is already there and then you are selected as a leader you're chosen as a leader to lead the team right so in that case we need to develop 
in order to build a great team, we need to develop the people who are already there, develop the ones we have. Okay, um, so building a great team, of course, it starts with us individually. Whether we are a team leader or we are a team member, it starts with us. Why? Because if we change, then we we change the value or contribution that we bring to the team. Right? If we would make our make change, say, okay, uh, I well, I've had this attitude, I'm going to change. Right? That's just that small change in attitude or contribution does so much to the team. Okay, um, the contribution to the team. So. In order to make a great team or build a great team, we just need to make sure that the individuals themselves are improving or changing. Okay. Okay. So we'll, let's look at uh, some qualities. Okay, uh, of a team player. Um, so we either, when we are recruiting, we either look for these qualities. Okay, we see. Okay, do people have these qualities? Or if people are already there. We see that okay. How can I build this quality in them? Okay, how can I build this characteristic in them? Okay, um, and all the things that we saw earlier, you know, about how uh, I think we 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 looked at one section, right? Potential team or potential leaders. You know, we looked at several characteristics um, in order to lead, in order to build them up, lift them up, or position them as leaders. We looked at right in the first section. Okay, now. Now there could be an overlap of that, right? So, so let's look at some of those things. One of the first thing is that we value or give importance to character. Okay. Now, ability is something that will that will be like a doorbell, like that, that will be something which will be on display for any person, right? The ability, the skill that they have, the the gifting that they have, the anointing that they carry. Right. That will be something that is on display, really visible. But we need to go beyond that and look at the character. Right? Who is this person really like? What is this person really like? You know, we need to value as a you know as a recruitment thing, or even as a you know what you're developing people into. We need to value character. Over ability, and that's why Paul says, "No, Paul says Timothy, you know, commit these two um, committed people who will be able to teach others also." And Paul gives an instruction to Timothy: "The teachings that I've, you know, that you heard from me, that you've learned from me, commit these two faithful men who will be able to teach others." Okay, so he's talking first, of, first of all, about commitment, faithfulness, and then about ability. You know, if you look at First um, uh, Timothy and also look at Second Timothy and uh, you know in Titus, we see that there is a listing, whole listing of qualifications, right? This is what you know. If a man desires the position of a bishop, overseer, you know, it's a good task, it's a good good thing, and so on. And then he lists down the qualifications. They should be like this. They should be like this. And if you look at all that, you see that a whole lot of things are about character. That does not rule out ability. You know, we need to have ability, right? We need to have skill. Suppose you have a, you know, you're putting someone as an accountant. Now they need to have the knowledge. They need to have the skill to be an accountant. You know, but even before that, over and above that, they need to be people of good character. Okay, always, right? So value character over ability. That's one of the, you know, the main things that we need to look at. Yes, we need to have skill, but we need to, you know, make sure that there is um, character, right? Okay. Um, okay. I think we'll we'll start this section next class. We just have a minute to go. Any questions? Anything that you want to add? Share. No. Okay. Okay. We'll stop here, and we'll continue next class. Thank you.